Hello and welcome to the sideboard here in Seattle. I'm Glenn Jones and I'm joined by Gavin Verhey. Hey everybody, great to be on camera. Yeah, it's been a while uh, since you were snatched from our from our uh, our bosoms, as it were. <laughs> right, I was just the you know the kid taken out of the cradle right there. Yep. But I mean, I love it. It's a great job working at Wizards. But uh, I miss Star City too. You guys are good stuff. You do good products. Uh, the show is great. So. You guys do fine products as well. Uh, we make an okay one, yeah. I guess. Dungeons and Dragons is pretty good. So. Dungeons and Dragons is sweet. <laughs> uh, so you've been there a little while now, and uh, you're you know full time employee. Uh, what what's your official title at Wizards uh, now? Game designer. So game it's designer. the title that's very coveted. What I've always wanted, the game designer. So oh, well, it's really it cool now. to tell people that. Uh, what's your your day to day at Wizards now nowadays? Obviously, you can't tell us you know the projects that you're working on specifically. Other than that, that there are projects. <laughs> but there are definitely projects. Yeah. What's your basic you know walk into the office, go to work? Um, so I kind of have a couple main duties. One is just make sure you play enough Magic. Like mm -hmm. Future Future League. We want to make sure that the format is so well-rounded, especially with standard. I mean, there's so much standard being played these days that the format, the format can get hashed out really, really fast. Um, you know, between these open series, all the Grand Prix, the Pro Tour. So we want, really want to make sure it's a dynamic format, that the decks are changing, there's a lot sure. to play with, and that there's some hidden gems in there players can kind of find, you know? Even if you look at this standard format, it took a while, while for players to kind of find things that they're doing now. Definitely, definitely true. Um, so play a lot of uh, Future Future Loot. Future, future league games, build new decks, of course, to do that. Occasionally, we'll have meetings. We'll walk into a meeting, and it'll, it'll be like, say, we walk into, I'll use Gate Crash as an example, because that one already happened. <laughs> you walk into a Gate Crash meeting, and it'll be like, okay, we played some limited last week, we need to tweak these cards, or standard is blowing up because of this broken instant. Let's, let's you know, tweak this or change it somehow. Um, so, you know, or it'll be, just be like, design thinks that red can't do this, we have to change this card, something like that. Um, and then, in addition to all my magic stuff, so I do that, you know, have other projects. I work on From the Vault. From the Vault 20 is kind of my baby. That's something I worked on a lot. Hopefully you guys will enjoy that. I think you guys will like it. Um, but in addition to that, I also do work on one of our other games, Kaijudo. So yes. that's the, um, the kind of Duel Master-ish uh, game that's aimed at um, uh, a lot of the same players, some, some younger players, but it's uh, got a lot of stuff going on there, and, you know, we are working on uh, cards, new sets. There's uh, OP program we recently announced, so a lot of stuff in there I work on well. In addition to that, of course, I write my column for Wizards every week, and it's quite a list. Uh, manage a lot of the Kaijudo web content yeah. and all this kind of crazy stuff. So I'm busy. I'm busy, You're but busy it's guy. fun. I couldn't ask for more. Uh, from the Vault 20, obviously the most exciting, I think, of the things you, you just mentioned. But won't learn more of that for uh, quite some time. <laughs> uh, the set on the horizon right now is Dragon's Maze. Yeah. Obviously, in a in a few hours, actually, you know, we'll have all the cards. Until then, you're still. Uh, Mums the word on a couple of a couple of items. So, what was your role in uh, the design and development of Dragon Space? Sure. Well, it was really interesting. So, Dragon Space came on the heels of Gate Crash. Yep. And so, I was on the development team for Gate Crash, and for Dragon Space, I was not. But I still played a lot of uh, games. I mean, so although I wasn't directly involved in the meetings for that set, I still played a lot of Future Future League games, built a lot of sure. decks, and um, you know, and Zach was very active in the Future Future League, so he was always asking us like, yeah play more games because I wanted to make sure that, with, that right, right. like with the first two sets we kind of just had a guaranteed deck building mechanism because you got these five new dual lands and you got these five new guilds which would, would enable a whole new slew of decks right you got your breeding pools suddenly you, you could do a lot of things to get your evolved cards with Dragon's Maze we're adding in a bunch of cards for decks that already might exist so we wanted to make sure that the format was changing enough that there's a lot of new stuff to explore and it's a smaller set we came off the heels of two big sets so we really wanted to play it a lot to make sure there was a lot of exciting new things happening there um, unfortunately, I'm pretty happy with, with where it ended up. I think the set will make a pretty big impact, and Zach made sure that his swan song was a powerful one. So there's a lot of really, really good stuff in that set. I think players are going to enjoy it. So my role was mostly playing games and commenting on things that needed tweaking. Uh, every week we have a meeting where we just where we just go in and for an hour talk about our experience playing the Future Future League that week, and that's sure. all we do is just talk about how our games went, what matchups felt like, what what sideboard options we might want to create or whatever, um, and. So we, you know, I went to a lot of those meetings and talked about a lot of my experience there and created, helped create the set that you're going to be able to play with in about a week. Yeah, it'll be very exciting to see all the cards, especially their effect on Standard. I think people are getting, a, you know, we got Junk Reanimator win the Standard <laughs> Open again. I think we're ready for a, a little bit of a shift. And it looks like the new set's ripe to deliver. A lot of cards are you know, pretty exciting. Uh, even if, you know, like half of them are just like target players should not be casting Sphinx's Revelation. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, Sphinx's Revelation, we knew it was powerful when we made mm -hmm. it in Return of Ravnica. I mean... 
we were playing it a lot, and we decided, well, this card can be strong, but we want to make sure there are answers to it, right? So in Gate Crash, we made Skull Crack, which in addition to hurting Thrag Tusk, also hurts Sphinx's Revelation. Um, and with Dragon's Maze, we pulled out a lot more stops. There's like Notion Thief, which is <laughs> very, very direct. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if your opponent has four mana untapped, be very, very careful with Caster Sphinx's Revelations. Because normally, when you cast a Revelation and your opponent's mana up, you're like, the worst that could happen is it could, could get countered, right? Like, the worst that happens is I'm not going to draw all these cards. With Notion Thief, it's a lot worse than that. You flash it down in response, and they're going to draw all the, all the cards. And yeah, you're just, there's huge. no way you can win off that. I mean, it's, it's very, very hard. Um, and we also made cards like Voice of Resurgence which are fantastic against Sphinx's Revelation, right? Punish, yeah. You have to do it on, cast your Revelations on your turn, and one of the big advantages of that card is you can leave mana up to counter your opponent's spells or destroy their creatures in the middle of combat, and it's a lot harder to do that when you've got a Voice of Resurgence on the table, on the yeah. other side of the table. Yeah, of course. I mean, you're making them frequently generate a threat each time, and as soon as they fail, that's when you Revelation. Right. Uh, and obviously, you know, everybody fails to generate a threat eventually. That's just the game of magic. You, you could play threat every turn, it'd be a lot easier. Right, and if you wanted a Supreme Verdict or what have you, you to get that card off the board, they're still going to get a token out of it, so it's hard to just remove that pressure entirely. So one thing we do a lot is we create these big hammer answers, like Notion Thief, where it's like, boom, this is going to annihilate your game plan. But we also like to make, make a lot of smaller answers so that people can just slightly increment their deck up toward defeating a deck. For example, you saw this all in Return to Ravnica. We thought Lingering Souls was going to be a really big thing coming out of um, uh, Innistrad block. Sure. So we made a lot of ways to deal one damage to cards. So, so even just like tiny things that don't haven't seen a ton of play, like is it static caster? We made yeah. sure High exist for sure. so that you can you know play them, and they're not always going to show up in every deck. But if your blue red deck really wants an answer, you can play like Electricery or is it static caster? Any cards like that. And then the thing we did to counterbalance that is we gave a lot of cards a second toughness to make sure that in Return to Ravnica your cards weren't getting killed by. It's cards like, is it Staticaster? Sure, which is actually sure. how Deathrite Shaman got it. I was about toughness. to say, it all makes sense now. Right. Yeah. So if you ever wonder why that card is a 1 2, it's partially so that we didn't it's Lingering on it. Souls fall. Right. <laughs> it's, like, like everything else, you can blame Lingering Souls. Thanks, Tom Martell. <laughs> ah. All right. Well, uh, you know, we've got all 10 guilds in Dragon's Maze. So the limited format is bound to be uh, significantly more interesting, mm -hmm. I think, than what we've had before. Uh, I think the primary manifestation, at least for me in the limited format, that was the most interesting was certainly the guild keywords. I was really impressed with RTRs. Uh, anyone who knows me knows I wasn't that thrilled about Great Crash just in general. But RTRs, like, they really sold me. I, I love all the keywords in that set. Uh, I thought they were really cool. And I want to know what was your favorite of the 10 keywords since, you know, you, you had a more active Ooh. role in their, uh, their origin. Of the 10 keywords, my favorite is probably Cypher. Um, I really like Cypher. I know it hasn't panned out really in Constructed, but it's partially because it's really busted if it gets going in Constructed. Yeah, so we yeah. had the. I mean, there, there's still some good stuff going on there. I mean, you'll see maybe kind of what's going on when the full set of Dragon's Maze is revealed. But um, it's. I really like its original. Like, a lot of the mechanics is, are true. very simple, which is good for gameplay. Like, cards Unleash, Blood Rush, like, those are awesome for gameplay. But. Um, I love, like, Cypher's a little more unique. I read it, and I was just instantly excited. And especially for Demir, we had to try a couple different things out. When we hit on Cypher, I was pretty excited by it. And um, it, just playing with it makes you feel powerful. You get, like, this effect every turn. You get to draw a card or make them just card a card or any number of things. So I like that. Um, and, yeah, like I said, Limited is totally crazy. I mean, you have everything coming together. And my favorite thing, I think the key to everyone out there, if you want to play Dragon's Maze Limited at a pre-release oh. next weekend... Inside info. ...is reevaluation. It's like, you've played with Gatecrash, you've played with Return to Ravnica, but you haven't played the full set, right? Like, cards that just weren't good in Gatecrash could suddenly be very good in Dragon's Maze because, um, like, I'll, I'll use Cypher as an example. Like, Gatecrash was a really fast format, right? You just did not have the time to be, like, casting last thoughts and drawing two cards over right, the course right. of a bunch of turns. Dragon's Maze, you've got a gate in every booster, right? The format's a little slowed down. You've got, uh, a, you've got some cards that incentivize defensive strategies a little more and so suddenly stuff like that can look really really potent where your glory seeker style card your, your two mana tutu is still good in a certain kind of deck you can still draft a gruel deck or a boros deck but there are more options but there are a lot more options okay. to play with there so I think the key is going to be reevaluating. Re also synergy right there's a lot of great cross set synergy like suddenly your stuff that interacts with plus one plus one counters your crown ceratox and yeah. your sapphire drakes of the world work well with scavenge you're just like Give your guy four counters, load him up, he's in the air, attack, you're like your opponent is dead. So there's a lot of cool cross-synergy stuff you can do there. Even, um, like, 
if you have a weirdo deck that has like Cypher and like any Blood Rush cards in it, you can attack and your opponent's just in a rough situation. It's like if I block, my guy's gonna die. <laughs> if I don't block, they're gonna get it's an a free advantage. Spell, yeah. Right. So there's a lot of li little things like that which you're just gonna have to kind of reevaluate. I think you guys are gonna love, 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 love Dragon's Maze Limited. If you, if you guys like original Ravnica Limited, Dragon's Maze is kind of like that. It's crazy. You can play all five colors if you want, or you can build like an aggressive two color deck if you're kind of going for that kind of thing. So a lot of great paradigms happening there. I'm looking forward to trying it out myself. Uh, Pre-release has always provided me with a rare weekend off, which is, which is much appreciated. <laughs> right. Well, which uh, guild are you going to pick? Which guild? I'm, I don't know. You know, I've I've been kind of thinking about it. Uh, I feel like I want to go back to RTR. You know, it's been a while. I, I miss I miss the Zorius guild. I miss Selesnya. Okay. So probably one of those two. That's so, that's right. So if you pick one of those two guilds, who do you want to pair with the most? So you get your kind of secret ally in the Dragon's Maze pre-release yeah, pack. Yeah. Which one would you really hope to get? Like, what's the combination? You're like, oh, I want to play like. Orzov along or Boros along with Rakdos because I get this really aggressive deck where I want like Azorius and Demir so I can cipher my flyers. Like, what do you really want to get? What's the combination? I, I feel like I, I would. I, I think I might like Selesnya Orzov. I don't know. That seems like a, mm, a nice cool. one to me. A little spicy. Two pretty potent mechanics. You can do a lot of uh, extra things uh, with those two, especially building up the ground, obviously, uh, which Orzov really likes. Uh, and if I was going to pair Azorius, I guess I would have to go with Demir because I'd I'd want to give Cipher that second chance. You've, <laughs> you've sold me. I'm, I'm interested. I want to see it. Right. There's some cool stuff you, you can do there, for sure. Uh, what, what about you? What would be your two? Uh, oh, Demir. I definitely want Demir, mm -hmm. uh, just because that's the guild that I'm aligned with, so go Demir. And I think Azorius is a pretty good pair for them. You can do some cool stuff. Uh, although, um, if you end up going, if you get any good populate cards, you can do some crazy things with, with like rapid hybridization. You can, like Ooh. make That's like a good way to start your token chain going. Yeah, that's a nice it's, one. Like, hit my own guy, and then like, you know, you can start populating a little bit. Of course, white, green, blue, black, not the easiest combination to make work together, but you can play some green cards or some white cards depending on what you get. So the thing about Dragon's Maze Limited is, you know, you, you could end up with five colors, four colors, three colors, like you kind of open up your pool and you see what's going on. You've got all these clue stones, all this mana fixing. So there's a lot of options, a lot of options. Well, uh, we're gonna have to wait uh, a few more days to see all these options for ourselves. Uh, right. But thank you for the sneak peek, Gavin. Uh, thanks for joining me in the side. Oh, thank you always so much. Pleasure. Always, always fun. It's great seeing you guys. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. Hope you guys like Dragon's Maze. It is an awesome set.